The Great Barrier Reef is one of the world's natural wonders, but this morning a UN agency warns the reef is under threat. One big issue, an Australian government plan to boost coal exports. Sunday morning correspondent Lee Cowan takes us under the waves down under. From the air, our dive site in Australia's magnificent Whitsunday Islands looks pretty inviting. The famous Whitehaven Beach beckons. Can you just taxi my tanks all the way on? Our guide is Tony Font, California dive instructor who came on vacation to the Great Barrier Reef 30 years ago <laughs> and never left. So the Great Barrier Reef is really your backyard. Well, it is, and it's been that way for over 34 years. And I love every minute I've spent underwater. And I've probably spent more time underwater than I have on land. <laughs> A view he was anxious to show us. Great. Just beneath the waves is a shimmering kaleidoscope, a menagerie of life so significant, the Great Barrier Reef has been deemed a United Nations World Heritage Site, the equivalent of a national park. Like a park, it's to be protected. But on Wednesday, a United Nations agency overseeing the conservation of the reef expressed concern over a decline in its overall health, citing threats both natural and man-made, like this. Now this is the berth, this is where the ships come in to be loaded. Uh... Near the reef are a number of commercial shipping ports. This one serving Australia's valuable coal reserves. <laughs> the Australian government would like to double this port's capacity to nearly 130 million tonnes of coal every year. We're talking about building the world's largest coal port in the most fragile and iconic place on Earth. Cherry Muddle is with the Australian Marine Conservation Society and says the reef is already under assault by a variety of natural causes. So this just aggravates an already bad situation in your view? Exactly. We know that cyclones, climate change, storms, they all have a great impact on the reef. So why then are we adding another threat? At issue is just how the planned expansion of the port would work. To make room for more ships, at least a million cubic feet of sand and mud would have to be dredged from the seabed below this pier, enough to fill about 150,000 dump trucks. The spoil, as it's called, would be dumped in the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park. Environmentalists liken that to discarding millions of tons of waste in the middle of the Grand Canyon. I'm all for having a fair fight, but at the moment, this isn't a fair fight. Queensland's environmental minister, Andrew Powell, says the government is being unfairly tagged as the bad guy. We care about the environment, we care about the Great Barrier Reef, we care about the reef's reputation. I've got five kids. I want them to inherit a better reef than the one I did. Close the mines down. Any potential damage, he says, is being purposely distorted by what he calls alarmist propaganda, like this from Greenpeace Australia. Turtles, dugongs and humpbacks better look where they're going. It's going to get noisy down there. What the extreme environmental groups will have you believe through their hysteria and their lies is that this is being disposed right on our pristine reef. So we're not talking about dumping on the reef? No. He says the dredge sediment won't be dumped on top of the reef, but would instead be carefully let loose over a deep natural channel, left to sink to the bottom made of sand and clay. Marine scientist Paul Doyle insists that any impact would be negligible. Why is this the good place to do it? Uh, I guess it's in, it's in deeper water, so it doesn't um, it doesn't resuspend and, and, and travel as far as it would as if, as if it was disposed inshore. Critics, however, question that theory and fear the sediment could float all the way to the reef itself and smother sensitive corals and seagrass. So imagine getting a bucket of mud or sand and dumping it in your swimming pool. Now, it doesn't just sit still and stay in one place, it spreads. The scale of all this is, is amazing. The distance from the proposed dump site to the outer portions of the Great Barrier Reef is about 25 miles, but in between there, there are thousands of fringe reefs as well. Like the one we dove on with Tony Fox. It may not directly impact the coral, because as the government says, they're not dumping directly on the coral, but the coral is part of the system, so if you impact any part of the system, it will eventually impact the coral itself. The United Nations is encouraged by some environmental progress by the government, but warns that unless more is done, it may consider putting the Great Barrier Reef on its list of sites that are in danger. In the meantime, the reef and its silent inhabitants are left to battle the threats they're used to battling, 
while the world above argues loudly around them. For CBS This Morning, I'm Lee Cowan in the Whitsunday Islands of Australia. Perfect example of how untouched beautifully, how nature untouched can be so yeah. extraordinarily beautiful. Yeah. No, I've been there. It's, it's an amazing thing. And you think that something could happen to that? You've got to do something. Yeah. I mean, must that's, be a better way. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. They will figure it out. They will figure it out.